Welcome back, it's League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you beauties, and we've been propping up, talking up the LCS in a positive light the last little while, so it's felt like it's time to pull them back down to reality a little bit, and we're going to look at 10 of the worst, underline, 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 plays in the history of North America, and Mark, unfortunately, there's a lot to choose from. It kind of is a, a, a good barrel to choose from for the LCS in this manner. You're right. You got to get balance in your life, folks. You can't have all the hype and excitement and positivity about the changes in the upcoming future of the LCS without revisiting the past and looking through a couple of these ugly whoopsie moments that we've got that no other region can deliver quite like the LCS. And we, you know, obviously a lot of these plays are going to be older when pro players were still figuring out exactly how the game worked how to play professionally and we start with a couple of teleport plays and listen this this summoner has been around a long time staple in the pro scene back to 2014 we know cloud nine was so dominant their first couple of splits balls was the best top laner in the league but even he loses his mind every now and then we got him Running around chasing complexity West Rice. That's right. We're going way back in the time machine here. And then does the classic, I'm going to TP right in front of your face so that I die. This, uh, we got to uh, set it up. This is before we get to the balls that takes advantage of the patch changes for worlds and everything else later on and dominates. This is the balls that is making some rookie level mistakes out here in the LCS early, chasing around down by the turret and it is the ring around the rosy ain't gonna catch him type of situation desperation kicks in he realizes i've made the whoopsie i've made the mistake i gotta get myself out of here how am i doing it it's the teleport but my man that is one of the most pathetic it's not the most pathetic because we've got a couple other ones to talk about it's one of the most pathetic teleports you'll see getting instantly popped out and it, the play starts with the questionable tp from west rice into the turret that says balls look at this idiot i'm gonna chase him down get a free kill and then of course the karma instantly pays him back when he tries to tp sub 200 hp and the dragon just smacks him you love, love seeing these. And again, it is that early era of League of Legends coming back and some of the graphical quality, I'll say. Oh, yeah. Nice and blocky, and you can't even recognize what some of these champions are. But that TP is not as bad as the one ahead of it on oh, this no. list. You guys remember the CLG Seraph era? You'll be forgiven if you forgot it because it was a dark age for CLG. But this TP on Rise is... Way worse, because first he tanks the Mundo. I love a champion with no CC. He can't interrupt the TP, but he can just whack him till he gets to 200 health. And then Seraph TPs into four guys and dies. Oh, my. And you know what? I'll give him some, some benefit here. I'm pretty sure everybody has done something similar. I'm not going to say to the exact level, because this was pretty brutal. As you said, you know, just making the choice to first off, try that engage with the Mundo and eating all the damage there and then saying, all right, I got to get out of here. Going to make this big play. I'm going in and you're going right into die to four guys of the enemy team instantly getting popped as the teleport completes. What are the comms on this play? Is Seraph saying, I'm com I'm flanking? We're engaging? Whatever the comms were, either nobody was listening to him or he didn't say anything. That's the only way I can see this play actually playing out the way it does. My thing is I want the comms just because I want that awkward silence that is going to follow through after the call. I'm dead? And every <laughs> everyone else gets the realization that he got blown up in that type of action. Yeah, he's already... 0-3, 0-4 oh oh at that point in the game. So there was some not-so-good moments uh, for Seraph and CLG. That eventually, they ended up going down to the promotional tournament when that was still a thing. Not good times on the Rift. Number eight one to look at here. This is, you know what, we give a little bit of leeway because some of it was probably for science. We're talking about TSM, Wild Turtle. Going into the base for the back door on the Nexus, and it all looks great. He's going to secure the game to win against Dig for TSM. But my man forgot, I can only assume, that the culling, his ulti, does not do damage to the Nexus. 
Oh no, this one looks so bad in hindsight and watching it and of course knowing these things. It has to have been a combination of pressure in the moment of, you know, the stress of going for that back door and trying to finish it off and then realizing, okay, I'm gonna have some attention. I'm gonna have everybody else either recalling, respawning type of situation. They're gonna get me. How do I get this damage out as fast as possible? Your brain is instantly going right to that culling, you know, slamming all those shots. And then you take that second to realize, wait, none of these shots are, are doing anything here. It can't have been a misclick. We talked about this one, thinking maybe that is the saving thing for a turtle here. He keeps it on. If it's a misclick, you're It's a double misclick. Help. He doesn't unmisclick it. Oh my God. And it's one of those ones you see it go through. And then of course he dies and you look at the health of the Nexus. And it is that realization of, the culling, even if you needed it, there's never a need for it. You had the damage without anything else in between. You had the time, especially on a champion like Lucian. This is an all-timer for Wild Turtle. Yeah, with the double tap. Even if he presses culling on and off and he wants to double tap on his passive, that still seems slower. They would have won the game right there. Luckily for them, TSM does eventually uh, win that game. And this was after game one, historically, if you would call. This was Zion Spartan on Nasus backdooring the first game. So a wild two game start to this series, but uh, Wild Turtle doesn't live on in too much infamy because as I said, they do eventually win the game. Number seven on here is a guy whose whole career was infamous for a little bit of maybe flaming, little bit of trolling. We're talking about Dardock, and this is not from the Team Liquid era. This is from the IMT Immortals era, which is his toxicity was at a full 200%. And this Lee Sin dive on impact, he was only left laughing afterwards. Remember, this is the Dardock where we've evolved even past when he's challenging and talking back to Steve as a teenager, number one. <laughs> the crazy career of Dardock. What was this dude in. like in high school, by the way? The high school teachers, like... <laughs> Insanity, my man. And then we step in to the Immortals era of Dardock, and it was very clear that the actual skill, the mechanical skill and execution that he had individually was at a higher level than what was going on with this roster, what was going to be facilitated by Immortals. So there's a whole kind of era of that to talk about in the cloud over it. But then you get to this individual play, and I think it's there either is the mistake of thinking that the Lee Sin Q is still attached to the other guy, or it just simply is that brain switched right off at the worst time, whoopsie type of moment goes right back in for the kill. And the reaction of him just straight up laughing, it, the way he looks like he's laughing, it's like impacts the guy who screwed up and got killed. But, uh, <laughs> and this is peak meme impact because if you look at the all chat here, impact after that play says same in all chat, which is, <laughs> that's Cloud9 teaching him that meme-lish right there. Oh my God. The LCS fully is born <laughs> at that time where we got the memes flowing through in our professional games. This is a silly one. I think a lot of people in the LCS will look at and remember Dardox Lee Sin for a lot of other big plays, a lot of other dominant, you know, really oppressive type of jungling. Not really a, a slip up like this. And poor, you know, Flame at this point saying, I'm, I came from the LCK, oh, which is no. the consummate professional focus league. And then I got this guy coming into my games as my jungler. Oh, man, report FF15, get me out of here. Get me out of this region is what Flame was saying by the end of those uh, Immortals runs, I'm sure. But yeah, Dardak, lots of highlights, but one of the most exciting players for the good and horrible that he brought to the Rift and off of it. Top six now, we get another nice, fun little TP play. Now we get a little Team Liquid action. And again, a lot of this historically, you're just going back remembering what some of these rosters even were because we got Team Liquid Lorlo and this is the meta where there was these lane swaps and top laners just got completely abandoned. He decides, all right, I'm going to kill this top turret at level one. He gets it and he says, I'm going to TP bot and catch the wave so that I get mega far ahead, except there's four members sitting there waiting for it. Uh, not just the four members, there might have been a little bit of extra attention that needed to be paid to the health of the turret that you're teleporting to, my man, because that was paper-thin health by the time that the TP completes. 
and we do end up with it down and a dead Lorlo quickly afterwards. Yes, this is a whoopsie. It's important to remember that this is, of course, during that era where we did have teleport able to be canceled is one of the things to keep track of. So that was certainly one where maybe you <laughs> he don't decided want to, to commit. He went for it. He went full in for that one. And of course, as you mentioned, trying to get that goal, trying to play that cross map and try to get everything going. I can appreciate that. But absolutely, the the care for what situation you were putting yourself into was not taken into account by all or low there. And let's, you know, there were a lot of top laners that were making mistakes like this during this yes. era. As much as we poo-poo on the current modern day metas, the lane swapping of top laners being denied CS for five minutes, thank God we are years removed from that because that was tough to watch. It was a pretty rough meta and it was one that maybe created a little bit of chaos in the sense of how a, how you were trying to set behind the top laner, how you were trying to get your top laner into the type of situation. But yes, I think a lot of us can look back on it and say, you know what, that's a, that's a theory for the past. It turns out having, you know, five CS at five minutes uh, makes you kind of irrelevant for the majority of the game. So Lorla will forgive you because there were lots of other guys making mistakes like that. Uh, not many teams make mistakes like Team Coast, which is a team we've highlighted as one of the worst LCS teams. And this is the worst play from the worst team because not only does... So your mid laner gets caught out and it becomes a 5v4. While the team who just caught someone out is pushing down mid lane, and you say, down 5v4, let's go bear. Let's do it. How, how else are we going to fight them in the base, Eric? Come on, we need that Baron. The problem is, I'm not counting how long it's going to take to take down that Baron and how long it's going to take to take down the base. And, for, and just like me, Team Coast didn't go through that Nobody equation. Nobody counted. Oh. And they're not the only time that we've seen this equation in the LCS. This has been a very familiar equation, whether it's the Baron, you can replace it with Elder Dragon, whatever, uh, you know, neutral objective you want. This is an LCS play to its core, making that type of trade. And unfortunately, it eventually evolved to be happening outside of the LCS and on oh. the world stage. <laughs> That's not the type of effect we want the LCS to be having on the international competition. Yes, we have seen it from other regions, but there's no region that makes trades, you know, ex exchanges quite like the LCS can. And this is where it's all born from good old Team Coast. And doing it against Team Dignitas of all squads. Oh, it's, yeah. it's like extra poetic that way. Of course, because Team Dig is known as the failed Baron organization. And here you are making that trade for Baron for your Nexus. Even a team like Dignitas is going to realize that ain't the trade that you want to make, man. <sighs> they made it. Coast didn't in 2015 <laughs> because uh, they had a lot of other issues going on. But yeah, one of the worst calls we've ever seen as a team in the LCS. Number four on this list is one that gets an asterisk beside it for me because... It's a mistake that I think not only a lot of guys could make, but a lot of pro players. But because of the stakes that were on this game, it has to be a bit higher. And this is unfortunately 2017 Spring Finals Game 5, the infamous Jensen Echo ulti that wasn't. He has the ulti. He has the Zhonyas. He's super fed. He's been playing a fantastic game but he doesn't press any buttons. In the final team fight, he gets blown up, and 60 seconds later, TSM's hoisting the trophy. And this one is definitely different compared to where else we have you know, visited throughout this list so far. You gotta go through the situations, and of course, realizing the ones that we've talked about so far, you and I can make those mistakes, anyone else can make those type of mistakes. They're things that you can understand, you've seen in your games, you've either done before. The one that happens to Jensen is one of those ones where you can understand it happening to you or I, but you wouldn't want to see it at the professional level. That is one of those type of ones where you're expecting that execution, that attention is going to be there. And it's going to be there in the most important moment of the biggest series for Cloud9 to that point. And it wasn't. It is unfortunate. That's the way it goes. It is that zero to 100 popping of the Echo. He has the Zanyas, has it all. He can't get it done. Why isn't the Echo alive anymore, Eric? Come on. And he doesn't even get to respawn and the game's over. That's the craziest thing is this one mistake. It's not like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna redeem myself next team fight. No, 
You're shaking hands. TSM wins another trophy. It's that quick. And you got to set it up that this is, again, turn back the clock. We all know how things went from now and where Cloud9 is and where, well, TSM doesn't exist anymore type of situation. <laughs> but at the time, this was the TSM with Wild Turtle and Cloud9 loses in this crucial game five. You can't even beat a TSM without double lift. How are you going to get by Reginald's monster? Well, Reginald's going to self-implode it type of situation is what we're <laughs> going to learn. And the only way it can die is from the inside. And everything else plays out fine for Cloud9, but this is an important one to look back, a significant one in LCS history. I think one where Jensen individually gets a little bit too much flack in that situation, but certainly one that can't escape a list like this. And unfortunately, luckily for him, he did bounce back and end up picking up many titles uh, his way with Team Liquid and Cloud9. Top three now, and this third one technically isn't in the LCS, the only one on this list, but it features an LCS team. We're going IEM San Jose, and CLG gets absolutely embarrassed by one OG Niels on Tristana. You have not one, not two, but three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back fail flashes from Counter Logic Game. Oh, baby, what a play this is. Let, let's first off say IEMs. I want those type of tournaments, those oh, additional ones on the side. They've got to come back. They're a great thing. Super entertaining. Would love to see them back. And part of what you get are things like this, moments like this from CLG. It all starts with Afro Moose Flash going wrong. And then, you, well, I'm sorry, not even Afro, but it's looking at who he. He's the first one. He flashes and then stands in place because he knows he's dead with the bomb on it. That's how bad it is. You know there's nothing left to do at that point. And I think kind of the shock reaction type of adaptation at that point then is Aphromoo trying to flash and get out there and he fails it. And then Stixay sees that and his reaction is to flash out and he fails it. It is the comedy of errors, the dominoes of the LCS, an all timer to keep track of. And that, that's just, you know, CLG was the team of friendship. They're just going down together. They see one guy doing this, hey, don't worry, Hoohee, I got you. And the Afro, don't worry, brother, I got you with the bad play. And this is one of those ones, an example right here for the LCS. It doesn't matter if you're one of our stars, one of our icons. You can contribute to a piece of history just like this. Who he's sticking around through the scene, through, you know, role swapping as well. Aframu, of course, one of our mega supports of all time in North America. And Stixa in that ADC role as well. Yes, even with all the good, you can still turn it back and find a play. Whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie like this. Don't worry, guys. Even Faker has some flashes into the wall. So even the GOAT <laughs> is making some of these mistakes. Uh, OG Niels is the one popping off here, but I'll tell you, a play OG Niels would never make is number two on this list. You talk about high stakes. We gotta bring up the Sven Skarner Ezreal moment. Why is he wandering in the river? What's he hoping to accomplish? Maybe he lands a Q on X Smithy Skarner. That's about it, but he gets caught out, and then the rest is history. They end up losing the game in Game 5 and don't win a title. There's one more play to talk about after this one that is obviously, for so many reasons, we'll get to it, of course, we'll talk about that, that is deserving of that number one spot. But as far as the significance, this to me is the biggest mistake in LCS history. What happens here? From Sven, this confidence, obviously, of course, the whole situation before it, where Sven is looking over, you can't find Jensen. But you can't find Jensen because he's low, he, he's further back on this list. You got a worse play, man. That's why you're up here. Gets caught out. It's Smithy, the classic. He's like, what are you doing here, buddy, in the river? And they pop him. And from that point on, it is the team liquid avalanche towards their championship. The most mobile AD carry in the game, based at the at the time, probably not now since then. Uh, but the Ezreal, and Zven has talked about this play. He says, you should never die in that scenario. Just don't get hit by the Skarner slow. He ends up popping his QSS on the slow because he gets hit by it. And then Xmithy pulls him out. There's just, there's no positive to Zven being where he is in this play. No, and I, I think that it's important. A lot of people want to really hammer on to this mistake because of everything that I talked about, you know, Zven looking over, Jensen, that type of cockiness, that type of attitude, and, and you know, TSM behind it as well, want to slam down on it. I think Zven has handled it really well in retrospect, looking back on it, acknowledging it, and, you know, kind of healing from what is, again, 
you know, from the outside looking in, different from a spectator pr- point of view, being the one making that type of significant mistake, living with it, dealing with it, and trying to move on, and having moved on and have a successful career afterwards, absolutely a mega thing to keep track of and keeping that story around what is such a significant bad play in LCS history. Luckily for him, the utterly infamous Dignitas Renegade double execute of 2016 is far and away not just the worst play in lcs history this might be the worst play in professional league of legends history you can make a play that i think like sven where i would argue you know if you've played more than 10 games of league of legends you might have figured out not to do that type put yourself in that type of situation and then that costs you a championship Sitting on top of it is all the mistakes that come through from Team Renegades. Oh my lord. Get yourself some eye bleach. This is going to be one to go through. It looks like you're watching players who are playing the game for the first time, trying to kill these things. You know, your buddy plays for the first time. He goes to try and do red buff and he dies. And you're like, yeah, the, the camps are a little tougher than you think. These are pro players getting paid tens of thousands of dollars, Mark. That's the craziest thing. I think, I think you know, it's it's a different world and talking about professionalism and paying all these things. Man, it even is realizing we're not at the the you know extent of million dollar perks here in the LCS at this point, but it is real dollars, real thousands, tens of thousands of dollars these guys are making. And you see these mistakes on the broadcast? You see the two dying to the Rift Herald? What's going on here, man? And that's an ugly looking Rift Herald, by the way, going back uh, oh. to 2016. But the fact that it's unedited, 30 seconds after two guys die, execute to a turret, the other team dies to Rift Herald, it's like they planned this out, Mark. I, I'm almost convinced it was coordinated because to look this pathetic, this bad, this out of your depth, in a game where you're supposed to be professionals. There is some skill. There is some commitment and knowledge to the game being put in here, but you don't see any of that in this play whatsoever. And as you said, it's unedited. It's 30 straight seconds of unfathomable mistake topped by only another mistake that is of a higher level. Whenever you're feeling down about the LCS, just watch this clip and say at least we're not at that level, guys. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you on that flippity flip.